I'm Joan London. Welcome to DirecTV Hometown Heroes, a show about our subscribers from all over the country who perform extraordinary acts of kindness and courage every day. Tonight, you'll meet a flight attendant who travels the world to transform the lives of children. The love that we've delivered is truly making a difference. We're going to the Everglades. A former teacher dedicated to preserving Florida's most precious resource. When you save the environment, you are definitely saving people. And two young people from Boston determined to do everything in their power to make sure nobody goes hungry. Honestly, there's nothing better in the world than giving back to others. This is DirecTV Hometown Heroes. People get ready, there's a train to come in. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. All you need is faith to hear that diesel humming. You don't need no ticket, you just get on board. Our first story tonight has an international flair. Flight attendants are rarely at home for long. We recently met one who proves that you can be a hometown hero wherever you go, even in a hometown that's halfway around the world. El Salvador is a country of contrast. It's a tropical paradise, yet more than a third of its population lives below the poverty line. A nonprofit organization called Airline Ambassadors is trying to change that one village at a time. We work on projects that deal with poverty and hunger, education, health, disaster relief, and community development. Really, we're here to empower these people in all ways. Even as a little girl, Airline Ambassadors founder Nancy Rivard felt destined to do something special with her life. I remember feeling that I had a mission to use my life in some way that was significant. Nancy's quest to find meaning in her life led her to a career as a flight attendant. She traveled the world, but everywhere she went, there were children in need. I saw so many children that had the same basic needs for school supplies, for health care, for clean water. I wanted to somehow make a difference. And I thought, what can I do where I am? And I looked in the overhead bins, and there were some empty ones. I looked in the belly of the aircraft, and I saw empty seats. And I said, what if we put HIV meds in the overhead bin? What if we bring even school supplies to one or two children? It could change their lives. Nancy knew she was on to something. Over the next few years, she signed up over 600 flight attendants to form airline ambassadors. They did everything from transporting sick children for treatment to delivering medicine and basic necessities to those in need overseas. We've been delivering a lot of aid all over the world. Over the next 12 years, Nancy turned airline ambassadors into a worldwide movement for change. Oh, I did. We went along with Nancy and volunteer Tara Hunnewell on their most recent trip, this time to El Salvador. Here we come. Hi. Tara is holding one of 25 sewing machines donated specifically for this trip. This is Tara's third trip to El Salvador with airline ambassadors. She knows that the goal is to do a great deal of good in a very short time. Got my sewing machine. First day we arrive, and it's like, you know, you just get straight to work because you're there to be of service. Come on, guys. Later in the day, they'll hand deliver the sewing machines. But first, they have an important stop make. Hi, children. This is a, uh, a center for children that are, are quite poor. Nancy and the airline ambassadors support this daycare center by giving each child a friendship bag. This is for you. It contains much needed school supplies, hygiene kits, and a gift from an American pen pal. We have programs where we visit the schools in America and have the children write little letters with a, a photograph of themselves in these friendship bags, and we get the children to write back to them. These letter exchanges are just part of Nancy's vision for dramatically enlarging the scope of airline ambassadors' community efforts. Our mission is to create the infrastructure for hundreds and thousands of people to be directly helping one another. One example of Nancy's vision at work is Kiwanis Village, the next stop on her packed schedule. This is a community that owes its very existence to Nancy after a fateful visit in 2001. 
I had brought my third airplane into El Salvador. And right when we landed back in the States, I get a phone call that there's been a major earthquake. And we came right back down. And sure enough, I mean, it was a horrible situation. Millions of people were made homeless, and thousands were pouring into refugee camps. After the earthquake, Nancy realized the people of El Salvador needed as much help as she could possibly give. We partnered with five organizations to build a community for these people. So I'm taking you the back way into the community. They started small. A local official donated land in the junkyard. Then airline ambassadors donated supplies and taught the locals how to build their own homes. We were able to provide housing for 150 families, and the families got title to that land. This was all dirt. I don't know how these trees have grown so fast. OK, so this is the living room. Que bonita. They have a kitchen back here. The modest homes often overflow with extended families. But for these new homeowners, it's a huge improvement on the kind of poverty few Americans could imagine. She said they used to live in a little house made of, I think, metal before. So now this is much better and easier. Nancy recognizes that unemployment is the biggest hurdle to improving lives here. She aims to change that as well. Nancy's brought about the sewing machines for a local vocational sewing center where she's greeted with a hero's welcome. <laughs> Nancy was instrumental in convincing authorities to open the sewing center. It is our great pleasure as fine ambassadors to bring sewing machines and hope to Qantas Village. After formalities, the villagers sign up for a coveted seat in the sewing class that relies on the donated sewing machines. The women pay $5 a month, which enables them to take the classes. After three months of class, the sewing machines are theirs to keep. They will have their own sewing machine to bring home with them, and they will have a job, and they will be able to make a living. It's all part of Nancy's long-term plans for the community. Our goal is to provide full employment, education for the people, and a good and healthy lifestyle. If that's Nancy's goal, she's well on her way. Last year, airline ambassadors delivered more than $4 million, food, clothing, and medical supplies to 24 countries around the world. We're able to turn every dollar donated, actually, into $35 worth of aid. And more than that, it's the love that we've delivered and the connection and the hope we've given communities that's truly making a difference. Volunteers like Tara say their lives have been changed by meeting Nancy and seeing how she never stops reaching out to others. It is an honor to be doing this work and to be part of such an amazing organization, and I just look forward to so much more. I'm just in love with the children here. I'm in love with this work. I'm in love with Nancy. Congratulations to all of you. For more than 12 years, Nancy Rivard has thought of little else but how she can help others. Her tireless work hasn't always been easy, but everywhere she looks, she sees something special happening. When you see those faces of those children looking back at you with gratitude, and those women today that were clapping when they received those sewing machines, what I've noticed is that the volunteers are becoming inspired, the children are being helped, and something else is happening from the love. It's spreading more than we can imagine. Later this year, Nancy will host a big airline ambassador's fundraiser at the United Nations in New York. For reaching out beyond our borders and improving the lives of countless children, Nancy Rabard is a direct TV hometown hero. Coming up next, school children take action to save environment. Oh, I see it. And later, a brother and sister team up to feed the hungry. Our mission is eventually to end hunger. Direct TV Hometown Heroes will be right back.
Welcome back. Next, we head to South Florida, where a former teacher and local school children have joined forces to save the environment. Correspondent Grant Goodeve has their story. This is Miami, Florida. It's a vibrant, sprawling city. But less than 50 miles away from Miami is one of the most delicate ecosystems on the planet, the Florida Everglades. It's nearly 50 miles wide and more than 100 miles long. The Everglades may look like an enormous swamp, but it's home to more than 1,500 species of plants and thousands of species of birds and animals. And it's also in constant danger of extinction. I took a ride with airboat pilot Ed Rout to find out why. So tell me, what do you know about the Everglades being Jeopardy? Anytime you get population that's looking to expand, something has to give way. Unfortunately for the Florida, it's been the Florida Everglades. There used to be many, many, many more here. But there's one woman doing everything she can to make sure the Everglades are around for generations to come. Isn't it neat in here, though? Meet Connie Washburn. 13 years ago, Connie was teaching at a Miami public school when she heard a developer had plans to pave right up to the edge of these wetlands. There was a proposal to make a theme park out in the Everglades. Connie and her fourth grade students decided to make a stand against the proposed theme park. We watched its progress and the children became incensed about it. That battle prompted Connie and her students to form Young Friends of the Everglades an education and advocacy group with one major goal in mind. It is to preserve and protect the Everglades, not just for us, but for future generations. With the Everglades being such a fragile natural habitat and serving as the primary water source for all five million Miami residents. This is what it's all about. Connie says it's worth preserving. So why do you think it's uh, important for uh, kids to learn about the Everglades? children can learn about it, understand its value and importance, and then go home and be great ambassadors and teach their, their family and friends. Hannah Richter is a Young Friends ambassador. She speaks to kids and adults to spread the group's vital message about the importance of preserving the glades. I recently joined Hannah and a busload of her classmates on a field trip to the Everglades to find out more about young friends. Of course, no road trip would be complete without some singing. The kids on the bus go save the Everglades all through the town. Yeah! For most of these kids, this trip is the first time they've seen the Glades in person, though they live just an hour away. Hey, Josh, do you know why we're going to the Everglades? We're going to the Everglades to promote Young Friends of the Everglades and to try to help to uh, heal pollution. We're here to save the Everglades. When we arrive, Good morning, everyone. we're greeted by a park ranger who'll be our guide. My name is Ranger Doug. I'm glad to see you all made it out here today. First, the kids take a class that reminds them that their city water actually comes from the Everglades, and they learn how to conserve it. As humans, what can we do to get water from these two buckets into here? Use less and conserve. Use less and conserve. Excellent. Next time, try and turn the water off while you brush your teeth or take shorter showers. After that, Young Friends Ambassador Hannah makes a presentation to her classmates about the precious wetlands surrounding them. I started conserving water, which is a big one. If you can just take little steps of that kind of thing, you can just do a lot because if everyone in the world did that then our world would be a much better place just as long as you can serve and think about what you're doing then it'll be fine i'll inform you of any poisonous plants all right let's go okay. it's not poisonous. then the kids set out on a nature hike to see the everglades up close does anybody know a different name for the everglades and learn why this spectacular natural landscape needs to be preserved the river of grass. The river of grass. And what type of grass is out there? Sawgrass. Sawgrass. I'm going to give you the opportunity to touch sawgrass. If you try to go down, do it one finger. And when it stops you, don't go any further. If you go further, you're going to end up cutting yourself. They lived it. They breathed it. They, I'm sure, developed a respect and a love for nature that they never would have had before. 
How does it feel? Before leaving, Connie introduces Sarah Kemper, one of the students who helped her establish Young Friends in 1994. In fourth grade, I was lucky enough to have Miss Washburn as my teacher. And like you guys, I was starting to learn about the Everglades. And at the time, a man was trying to build a sports park on certain areas of the Everglades. So that's how we got involved and start, sort of campaigned to stop him from doing that. Right there. Oh, I see it. At the end of the day, the kids have glimpsed a few of the thousands of species of plants and animals that live here. So cool. Guys, don't be surprised if he jumps on you. They head for home a little dirty. A little tired. Pretty hot down here. But armed with a much greater awareness of this precious resource. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. That helps keep them and their community alive. I love them. <laughs> I really love them. And that's all thanks to the efforts of Connie Washburn. It's for the children. They're the ones that are going to be using and enjoying this water. And I feel it's our job as adults to educate children and the public as to the importance of these environmental issues. Know your Everglades. So what do you hope the kids take away today? I hope they realize the value and the importance of the Everglades as a natural habitat and a water supply for all of the millions of people living in South Florida. When you save the environment and you save the planet, you are definitely saving people. So this has been fun, huh? Yeah. The young friends have reached almost 70,000 Miami school children with their message about the Everglades. For her groundbreaking work to preserve Florida's natural resources, Connie Washburn is a DirecTV hometown hero. Next, an inspiring brother and sister prove you're never too young to make a difference. No one should go hungry on Thanksgiving. You're watching Rec TV Hometown Heroes.
It's hard to believe, but true, here in the world's richest country, hunger is still a problem. Correspondent Mark Istook has a story of two young people committed to changing that. Boston, Massachusetts, the largest city in New England, and home to Owen's Turkey Farm. These birds are just 14 weeks old. At this age, they're cute and inquisitive and have no idea what fate awaits them. Turkeys like these will be part of traditional Thanksgiving dinners across the country. But not everyone gets a hot meal on this holiday. Sometimes I don't even get to eat for days at a time. Come in here, you get to eat, shower, change, have a good feeling about yourself. Thanks to Danny and Betsy Nally, two exceptional Massachusetts kids who founded Turkeys for America, these people at the St. Francis House Shelter and thousands like them across the country didn't go hungry this Thanksgiving. Turkeys for America is all about uh, kids giving back to those less fortunate. Simple as that. It all started in this upscale neighborhood of Westwood, Mass. Brother and sister Danny and Betsy Nally were just nine and six years old when they saw a TV report that changed their lives. It began when we were watching the news in 1996, and we saw that the Greater Boston Food Bank was going to be short about 5,000 turkeys for the upcoming Thanksgiving. And my brother and I thought that that wasn't right. At that moment, Danny and Betsy decided to collect turkeys and bring them to the Greater Boston Food Bank. Like late Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so Thanksgiving Eve phone call, that there are these two kids coming to the food bank, and Catherine, would you wait? Two small kids bringing turkeys? Yeah, I'll wait. It's got to be pretty sweet. Went around the neighborhood, collected money, collected turkeys, and then just piled them up into the Jeep and uh, drove them off to the food bank. And here these two little kids with their parents show up. From that modest beginning of 36 frozen turkeys, Danny and Betsy formed Turkeys for America, dedicated to making sure that nobody ever had another hungry Thanksgiving. Our mission is eventually to end hunger. And to do that, we're going to, first of all, try to raise money to fight hunger in not only the greater Boston area, but around the country, and also to get other kids involved in the fight against hunger. Over the years, Danny and Betsy proved that kids can make a difference as Turkeys for America grew and grew, helping more and more people. Each year, we would ask ourselves, and then now he's come back, <laughs> you know, is it going to happen again? It just kept on growing. We kept on reaching out to more people in town. And once word got around of what we were doing, it just it spread exponentially. Several years and hundreds of turkeys later, Danny and Betsy's efforts took an even bigger turn when Jim Purdue of Purdue Farms made a donation of a thousand birds to their cause. With Jim Purdue, it was we we just lucked out. Every year he gives us a thousand turkeys as a donation. It was our supplier, gave us an amazing discount on the turkeys, just an unbelievable man. Ready to toss some turkey? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Late every summer, while this year's turkeys are putting on weight, Danny and Betsy start planning their annual giveaway. So, another year of turkey. Last year, Danny and Betsy's organization donated more than 25,000 pounds of turkey to feed hungry people like those at the St. Francis House in downtown Boston. About 500 people come in just for Thanksgiving. And it's really hard because, I mean, everyone gets to sit with their families at home and, and eat their, their turkey. These people have to come through here, but we try and make it as good as we can. It's really good, you know. I mean, the food prepared good, the uh, hospitality is good, you know. You can even get seconds on that day, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice. It's nice. Everybody's smiling for once. These days, what began 11 years ago in Danny and Betsy's suburban Boston neighborhood is a nationally recognized and nationwide relief effort. It's been very contagious. There have been small turkey drives that have come out of it. And then specifically in California and Chicago and other cities, they've been able to make that imprint and allow that effort to continue in those cities as well. 
This past Thanksgiving, Danny and Betsy distributed 36,000 pounds of turkey, a heroic effort for two kids who started with just an inspiring idea. You are absolutely right to think of them as heroes. I mean, they came here as very small children, and these two small kids responded with action. According to Danny and Betsy, they're no heroes, and the pleasure has been all theirs. There's honestly, there's nothing better in the world than giving back to other people. It feels really good. I mean, we've been trying to make a difference for a while now, and just coming here makes us feel like even better because you get to see it right in front of you. Just the feeling of helping others, and that's something that I know, I know it's the same with Betsy, and it's the case for me. That's a feeling that we never want to have leave for the rest of our lives. So as long as we're, you know, st still walking around, still doing well, we're going to be trying to help as much as we can with um, whatever issues are facing the world. Danny and Betsy have big plans for the future. They hope to expand their reach beyond America to the world. For their efforts on behalf of the hungry, we're proud to call Danny and Betsy Nally Direct TV Hometown Heroes. The inspirational stories you've just seen show how DirecTV subscribers are changing lives in their communities. These unsung heroes show us all how we can make a difference. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on DirecTV Hometown Heroes. Until then, I'm Joan London. For more information on these stories and how to get involved, go to directtv.com slash heroes. People get ready, there's a train coming. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. All you need.